Welcome to the Race Crews Weekend Show for the weekend ending March 26, 2017. Here in the USA, Fast and Furious are hitting in Walmart. Unfortunately, I missed out at my local store. I popped into 99 cents only, and they had pegs and pegs and pegs of the cars. It didn't take me long to realize that it wasn't the 2017 version. This is the 2016 version that showed up kind of later in the year. Unfortunately, I went through all of the pegs. Mm, I didn't get any of the Honda S2Ks. It was in pink. By the way, for 2017, there's a black version of the Honda S2K. Uh, I'll have a case unboxing video during this upcoming week. Thankfully, I was able to find the Supra, though, at 99 cents only. As far as the pink S2Ks, I had to buy them off of eBay. That's just the way it goes. I had a few videos this week. Truck and Tuesday, off the pegs, and a case unboxing video. Let's go ahead and take a look at that off the pegs. No, sorry, Truck and Tuesday. Got to do them in order. And you know what I did? Uh, truck and Transporter. I think Mattel calls them something else nowadays. But it's called Pencil Pusher. Very colorful. I think the kids are going to like it. And Ryan Greco said, Mattel just gave up on the haulers. Well, I, I let them know, you know what, maybe the hauler's not for you. You know, that's kind of kid stuff, but it's up to you. You buy what you like. And here is the response that I gave them. And that video link, you know, a lot of adult collectors liked when Mattel came out with the Galactic Express. It's pretty cool. Really, really like the design of this truck. And it's the sign of the times because that's what they're doing, uh, you know, down in Japan. They're customizing their cars and their trucks. And they, they give it that, uh, it's called Decotura, right? decorate their trucks and when they do it to the cars i think it's a bazooka no bazooko i forgot something like that should have looked it up forgot anyway it's been a while it's been a while since i've been familiar with it but you know what if it's not for you that's fine because it is for somebody and right here i have a comment from diecast comics i like this new truck picked up one for my mom because she's a school bus driver and has been for 30 or so years now she must have the patience of a saint. Yeah, because let me tell you, those kids. Thanks for the awesome truck on Tuesday, Mark. Hey, thanks again. And he's also a frequent sharer when he uh, likes the videos, clicks the like, and it shows up on Twitter. And I know he likes the videos because I, I, I get the notification on Twitter. Thanks for that, too. Holiday Fun wanted to know, why did they call it Pencil Pusher when it works with a crayon? Why not call it Crayon Pusher? And, you know, <laughs> to be honest, uh, I was wondering the same thing. As a matter of fact, it was such a habit. Uh, here is, I'm going to show, I'll give you, I had to reshoot it. Check it out. The roof is a ruler and it also has a pencil sharpener. Check it out. The trailer roof is a ruler and you can use the hole to sharpen crayons. I goofed up and I called it a pencil sharpener too. On that note, I thought maybe, maybe they couldn't call it crayon pusher. Maybe it's a trademark thing. But you know what? I searched online. And you know what? Nobody trademarked the name crayon. And it just became a general term. Crayola, the, one of the major create, uh, producers of crayons, Crayola is trademarked. But I went to their website and said, please note that crayon is a generic term. Crayola is our company name as well as a registered trademark brand. Because I thought maybe, maybe Mattel couldn't call it crayon pusher, crayon, I don't know, something. I don't know. But uh, they could have. I don't know why they didn't. And lastly, regarding the truck, John STF72, a hot wheel truck that's actually useful for something. I'm curious to see if these would work for some downhill racing. You should try it sometime. Thanks for showing. Hmm. You know, I built this ramp. Yeah, I, I used it for Monster Jam at first. But I planned ahead, okay? I expect to use it. For a lot of stuff and I call it my monster truck track I should just call it my monster track because it's for larger vehicles and as you can see I planned ahead and I left a lot of room to put long vehicles as well I did an off the pegs video basically fo focusing on major ed but I also found some of their affiliate brands like Dickie Toys and here's a comment I got on that video Houston Cowdog I enjoy watching your videos. However, they're a good illustration of just how de degeneratively addictive diecast collection is. In addition to the cost of the cars, you also have the cost of storing all of them. I understand there's a great deal of enjoyment derived from diecast collecting, 
but stop and tabulate how costly it can be, especially considering the money spent on duplicate pieces alone would add up to a substantial amount of money. Absolutely. You're absolutely correct. Now, keep in mind what I do here on Race Grooves. Race Grooves is a business. Yes, I share a part of my hobby, collecting and that stuff. But look, Race Grooves is also a business, right? So I do case unboxing videos, right? It's something I decided to do five years ago just to add something to the channel. Would I buy a case as myself every month? I don't know. Probably not, to be honest with you. But look, now the new models aren't only in, let's just say, A. That, well, guess what? The, they carry over. So even if somebody bought every other case code, I think they would wind up with all the models of the year. And you can just donate the extra cars, the fantasy cars, or whatever you don't want. You can just donate them, right? Um, and especially if you're going to have to pay extra. Like, let's say you have to buy the stuff off of eBay. The key cars, let's just say, right? The more popular cars. Well, the money you spend on shipping and acquiring those cars, then uh, you might as well buy the case, donate the extras. You know, you might not spend in the same amount uh, and then buy every other case or something. But you're absolutely right. Any hobby can get expensive if you really get into it. Paintball, right? You get into paintball. Next thing you know, you want the best gun. Then you want the best attire. You want new goggles. You want new, you want all. Golf. Let's talk about golf. I don't golf. but It can get expensive. Any hobby can get expensive. But as far as me and a lot of stuff that I do, don't forget this business. So if I if I get extras, right, some of that stuff is going to be used for future videos. Noah Yi, hey, Race Crews, friendly suggestion. Can you do your Off the Pegs videos without the music and like the original ones where you can hear the in-store footage? Thanks. Love these videos. And a year ago, actually, Noah asked, hey, can you start doing the Off the Pegs videos again? And I said, yeah, I'm going to be doing them again, but hold on. So, yeah, I started doing them, but... Look, I got caught in stores and Toys R Us, you know, I got caught twice. And that's kind of why I stopped doing them. Because I didn't want a store to make an example out of me saying, you know, I just didn't look. I, I don't want no hassles. So that's one reason why I stopped doing the uh, Off the Pegs videos anyways. As far as, uh, so I decided to start them back up again. Now, with me doing them, really, I don't want people to be seen in my videos, right? And they're, they're supposed to be just shopping, relaxing, right? They, they don't need people to show up in some of these videos. They, I think they have the right to privacy. On that note, if they're talking or whatnot, you know, I, I want to kind of try to hide their voices because it's the same thing, privacy. They, they don't know I'm recording, right? Because um, technically... You sh you're supposed to get written permission from somebody if you use their likeness or if they appear on camera. You know, they have a right to, you should get you should get permission. But not only that, stores have music, right? And so you're walking around and you're recording and then you got the music blaring. Well, next thing you know, YouTube detects the music and I get a copyright strike because I have copyrighted music. So there's multiple reasons why I've decided to use music uh, covering those reasons i mentioned in that off the pegs video that i actually had a third video
would be the army set look cool same 164 scale as the matchbox but uh you know matchbox <laughs> they did they did have uh army tanks in the late 90s as a matter of fact uh, you know i was hanging out on message boards and some message boards say hey let's do a video of twins so you would get like two car you take pictures of the same two cars maybe different decorations they'd be twins right so I gave, I gave my kids a, a homework assignment because I was working graveyard. Take some pictures, and then when I wake up, I will, I'll review how you focused, how you centered the pictures and whatnot. Well, it didn't quite turn out how I thought. Yeah. Ready? For a minute. Seems like went longer. Boom. 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 Arm. Arm your main weapon. Yeah, that's fun. That's fun to watch again. Kids, they just like to play. What can you do? Now the Hot Wheels gotta go. It's a fantasy model, but we're enjoying it as collectors, right? They've got a toilet on wheels. It's not the first time. Hot Seat was the first one. I've already showed it in a previous weekend show. The real Sharky 1999, he wonders why Gotta Go isn't in the HW Write-On series. That's that's very funny. I like that. But, uh, you know, I tested some Lego figures. You can't get them to sit on the toilet because their hiney's too small. And they keep falling in the toilet or they keep falling over. So, can't be in the Write-On series. I didn't try standing them up in the, uh, in the bowl, though. Maybe that'll work. Now, Mr. Dan and Harry, apparently he's, he belongs to a local club where he's at. The last racing theme at our Hot Wheels Club was trucks, and a few members, myself included, ran the gotta go. It was good for a laugh. Roadster for track time. Yeah, you know what? Downhill racing, that's what I'm going to be doing here as well, right? It's just fun. Just have fun. And I guess, I guess gotta go would be a truck, you know. Yeah, got a pickup in the bed. It's got a bed in the back. Now let's go ahead and check out the scale between the Dickey Toys models and matchbox by the way i picked up these these two three packs i didn't even notice that actually these two models are the same these two models are the same but these two are different now i'm going to go ahead and open up this one because this one this rocket launcher looks like it has moving features so i'm going to open that one compared to this plus an old vintage i don't know if it's a vintage from the 90s abrams main battle tank from matchbox I think that came around in the late 90s but this is a modern this is a modern tank from modern mattel matchbox here you have blockade buster let's go ahead and open them up this one has plastic body metal cab plastic base here's the tank metal body metal turret i don't know if this i think this is the turret spinning turret i think the whole thing's called a turret could be mistaken though here is the rocket launcher doesn't have rockets but uh, you know what it's for unless the rockets pierce through this i'm not i'm not familiar with it but yeah check it out you can aim your rockets this spins that's a pretty neat little vehicle now let's go ahead and take a closer look at the uh, matchbox Look at the base. Abrams, main battle tank. Let's check out the scale, by the way. This is 1 1 13th scale right there. 1 1 13th scale. I looked at the bottom of the Dickey Toys models. I didn't see scale. I don't even know if they're actual licensed representation. But let's go ahead and take a, a scale comparison between these two. And these are 20 years difference. 
So very similar in scale. The Matchbox tank's a little smaller. Block A Buster, even, even smaller. Let's go ahead and take out the Toyota Tacoma. Let's compare scale with the Toyota Tacoma. Yeah, look, same size. <laughs> Practically exact same size in, in length. Uh, it's a little wider. It's a tank. It should be wider, right? So here is the truck. And there is Block A Buster for comparison. So, yes, the uh, Dickey Toys models are very, very comparable. I'm trying to alternate colors, make a nice little display here. Are very, very comparable in size. Thank you for asking. So you want to know what's in the case, huh? I did my 2017 F unboxing video. I put 17 F because when I stack them up, I don't know if this is 2017, 16, 15, 14. I've been unboxing cases since 2012, 2013. I forget, a long time. So I put 17 F on it right away. So I know 72 pieces in the case. Well, back in around 2003, 72 toys, they would be packed like this. They might have changed because uh, this is easier for stores to pat, stack up on pallets or inventory purposes. I, I'm not sure. That's my guess. But see, they were they were on these big square cases. Maybe they were easy to get squished or damaged or hard to stack. But they went ahead and changed. Now, let's go ahead and see what's in here. Now you know how people like to hoard basic treasure hunts or they just, you think things are going to be worth a lot of money. I might have acquired these thinking, hey, they were hard to find, might be worth something, or maybe I just wanted to have a lot of them. I traded treasure hunts, I traded, I, tra I traded stuff for these cars. What are they? Oh, I didn't mean for that to happen. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, oh well. I did not mean for that to happen. Because now it's a mess. I don't want to clean it up. Oh well. Classic game series Uno Escort. This car was hard to find. Uh, they didn't put case codes. I don't even know actually. That's interesting. I didn't think about it. I don't know if they put case codes anywhere on the package back then. But this car, it only appeared in like one case code around August, September. It's almost like Mattel had to hurry up and get it out for the model year, or maybe it was November. Yeah, it was like, uh, it was later. Maybe, maybe it was September, October, and they were already moving on to the next model year. And that was it. It was only in like one case code, maybe two. And when I say case code, I'm talking about this case code right here. Here you have F case code, FJX. Well, maybe there was an FJX and an FJZ. Well, there's lots of combinations, okay? This is an F code, and then they have lots of combinations. This car only appeared in one or two combinations. It was pretty hard to find. To be honest, mm, you're lucky to get three bucks for them now, but that's the way it goes. Love this car. Thanks for asking what was in the case. I've been waiting to make a special video. I think mm, it's good to put it right here in the weekend show. Oh, you want to see some errors on the weekend show? Well, let's go for a walk. I have most of my errors in one place. This way, uh, I try to stay organized. I do have a couple tubs in another spot. But this, this is a spot for my errors. There's some cases. Got cases here. Now, when I get cars, sometimes I just set them on top until I get them put in a case. This one I have blue tape to make sure that I don't accidentally mix it in with my regular Hot Wheels. This one has a bad rivet, so the car is uh, not put together properly. I'm sure you can figure this one out. Here you have a matchbox. Love this truck, very nice. Now, let me just randomly, uh, let's just pull a case. There's the old flat cases. I'll just pull out uh, three, and let's see if you can, can't see nothing. Else. Let me just uh, pull out these three. I don't know what these are. And hopefully they're in errors. Sometimes... Sometimes things get mixed up. Off the top of my head, I don't see the air. Uh, 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that one's an error actually. Yeah, I can see the error on this one too. Lumina van, very cool. Love this casting. And the air is right there in front of your face. And here we have uh, part of the uh, Techno Bits series Shadow Jet. Mm, haven't seen those wheels in a long time. Not sure what the error is with this one. I don't know if it has something to do with the wheels. Maybe the tap was a little high. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that one. I would have to do some research. Hey Mike, the Hot Wheels model that you have is called Path Beater. It's also actually called Byway Man. So you can find it with uh, multiple names. There's a third name too. I can't think of it right now. It doesn't always have the plow. This one has the plow. Ecology Center. There's the plow. Oh yeah, by the way, this one's from 1991, I think. There you go. Kuiper 1991. So it could have been issued, actually, in 1992. Wow, 25 years old already. There you go. Ah, smell it. Fresh. <sighs> okay, let's check out that plow. Let's go straight. Yours, you say yours is crooked. Sometimes it... It can't plow just straight forward, otherwise how's it going to get the snow out of the road or whatever it's doing? It's just going to keep pushing it forward. It should plow to one side. Nope. That's the way it is. It's got to go, uh, it's just straight. And then, uh, if yours is crooked, well, I'm sure you had fun playing with it. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed those little uh, video snippets. Now, let's go ahead and uh, let me give you an update on my super six lane table. It's actually just my gravity table. It's it's what I'm, the flat table. It's going to be a quarter mile long, not a real quarter mile, scale quarter mile long, 164 scale. So it's going to be 20 foot long. It'll actually be 24 feet because I have to have some space at the end for the cars to uh, go into a catch box type thing. And if I want to make a longer, I can make a longer too. Now, I already had 15 feet of this table built when I had it at home in the garage. So now I got to make another piece. I'm going to make another eight foot addition. You got to use clamps to keep your materials in place. Right here, I need it just a little bit over because I need the saw to follow this rail. At this angle here, you can see that the, the blade is coming between the table. So I don't have cut a table before, okay? I can't do it again. One thing I didn't realize that, oh, my sawdust is getting kicked forward. I didn't plan ahead for that. Give myself some compressed air, dust it off, and here you see it's painted, at least the legs and the sides. I don't need the top painted because remember, carpet's on top of that. This 8-foot section is going to be stuck in between the other three. That'll give me over 20 feet of downhill racing platform area. And it's not just for Super 6 lane. It could be wavy lanes. It could be whatever I want to do over there. Heck, if I want to put a booster track on there, I could do that too. Now this great carpet, that's what I had on the platform before and that's just carpet runner you can put it like in an entryway but i got this green one i think i'm going to cut that one up and give it something different joe matthews asked what do i do with all the cases when i'm done unboxing them well i keep them all over here look uh, from right to left i have my oldest cases to the newest here you have 2012 and then 13 14 i keep them all unless like if i donate to charity then these are the boxes that I basically get rid of because um, kind of hard when I'm looking for a car, top layer, bottom layer, kind of, these are the ones I get rid of, but I keep every single case. Ken Windsor asked, how does Majorette compare to other brands? I think they're fantastic, right? They're going to, they're about $3 basically. In U.S. dollars, they're about $3, right? Uh, they're not cheap cars. Great quality, great, great quality, okay? Metal bodies, licensed models, and a lot of them have a little suspension. Give a little boingy boing in a car. So it's like having a real car. And a lot of them have opening features. Maybe the back opens, right? Maybe the doors open. And you know what? Hey, when you were growing up, when I was growing up, okay, we had opening doors and you know we had suspension and we had all of that. And look, we're talking 30 years later, you cannot expect stores to still be doing that for a dollar. But instead, people just want a dollar stuff, right? Which is okay, don't get me wrong. They want a dollar stuff. 
Well, guess what? They can't do opening features. They can't do doors. They can't do hoods. They, can, they can't do it for a dollar, right? So for $3, fair price for me, right? What What's that say? Are they expecting too much? Or are we being cheap, too cheap and not spending three bucks to give the kids quality that we grew up with? For three bucks, Give yourself some, uh, give your kids some, not you, Ken. I, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about the general audience, right? Spend a few bucks and let your kids enjoy what you got to enjoy when you were a kid. Dan Marks, ask Grace Groups. As a growing YouTuber, I, of course, welcome subs. But I recently saw four comments flagged as possible spam by YouTube. They were asking for sub for sub. And after reviewing their channels, only one has similar content. All nice people, though. I don't want any hurt feelings down the road if I unsubscribe. Do you think it's a good way to build subscribers? Were you hit with these requests and how do you respond? The answer is no, no sub for, for sub, okay? If you like my content, subscribe to my channel, okay? If I like your content, I'm gonna subscribe to your channel, okay? Ain't no sub for sub, because people who wanna do sub for sub, they're thinking about themselves, right? They want you to sub to them. They don't care about your content. Sub for sub is one of the worst things you can do. Because sure, next thing you know, you got 100, 200, 500 subscribers, right? And that many subscribers and you got no views. Why? Because they were using you to gain subscribers, okay? Don't subscribe to nobody unless you don't like their content, unless you like their content, all right? Same with like on your main page, you can pe put people in your box, whichever site it's on, right? You're on the site, right? I used to rotate to other channels through that uh, site thing. It started causing nothing but problems. So now I don't put nobody over there. Because next you know, hey, can you put me? Hey, can you put me? It's like, never mind. Or, you know, there were even situations to where, okay, I put you. Next thing you know, they're doing the same kind of content I'm doing. They would be doing this, whatever they were doing before. And then I put them in my box. Next thing you know, they think they're little race groups and they start copying what I'm doing. Oh, that's not what I put you there for. I put you there because I appreciate your content. Not so that you can copy me, okay? So sub for sub and all that stuff, don't do it. Ain't worth it. Kai Brown asked Grace Cruz, what was the worst mess up which has happened while you were filming and did you edit it out? Well, you know, I've had various situations while I was filming and this and that, but probably the worst one that I can think of to where I had to take a video down and re-upload it. It was either a Christmas or yeah, it was a Christmas video. So, you know, the diecast companies, they'll have a, like, a, they have, they had the boxes to where it's a three pack, five pack, three pack of cars, but they're in gift boxes. You don't know what the car is, right? So then you buy it and then you say two sister from brother or whatever, right? Well, you know what I said was my parents, uh, mine would say from, to Mark from Santa. Wait, let me phrase this so you get it right, okay? My boxes would say, to Mark from Santa. And in the video I said, um, in the video I said, we all knew who that was. Well, a parent lit me up. How can you say that? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, for one, look, her reaction was totally, it was just crazy how out of line she was. So I left the video just, I don't know how short of a while, but I, I did think it over. And afterwards I realized I'm going to, I took the video down and then I snipped out that part and re-uploaded it without that part. Cause I thought, you know, yeah, she's right. Maybe I shouldn't say in the video what I said. And it wasn't anything bad, but I have to remember a lot of p kids in my audience are under five years old, right? So their perceptions of Easter bunny, Santa Claus and these things, right? I have to be respectful. Parents are allowing the kids to watch my videos. And I said that. I don't want nothing out of line, but some things I just can't say. So, yeah, that was the worst one. I had to take it down. DJ Hopkins asked Grace Cruz, can the Hot Wheels pencil pusher sharpen pencils? Nope, doesn't have a blade. It can't, not sharp enough. Can't sharpen a pencil. Hot Wheels Costa Rica, another channel. He's been around long, four or five years, long time. This is the first time I had a chance to watch one of your weekend shows. I really like the way you put it together. So slick editing and the picture in picture is a great idea too. Kind of fun for a project. Takes me all day. Here I am a Sunday. I started this 7 a.m. And right now it's I'm recording this at 3.30, but I still have to edit it, upload it. It's a lot of work. Um, so th that's another reason why I'm 
asking people if they would through Patreon, if you'd like to support what I do, okay, if you enjoy this content, um, Patreon is a way to uh, help support what I'm doing, okay? Thanks, Dave. Thanks for checking in. But before I forget, Patreon might not be open to all countries. Dave's not in Costa Rica. I don't know. He's enjoying the sun. He's got a wife. I don't know if you, I don't know if a Patreon is available in Costa Rica. I'm not calling you out, Dave. I'm just. It was a good time for me to mention it near the end of the video. Jellyfish baby, do you have the Matchbox Ford RS two hundred? You know, I looked it up. On, I looked for a picture online. I looked through my cases. I I don't think I have it, but. Uh, I did find the Escort Cogsworth. I have three samples of the Escort Cogsworth. And I should just play that video because I got a better close-up instead of me trying to hold it up to the camera. Spunky little model. If I happen to not have any in the collection, uh, I'll definitely be looking forward to that one. In the meantime, thank you for checking in. For If it's your first time, thanks for visiting. And I appreciate you uh, checking in. I hope you enjoy your collection or having fun with your toys. Whatever you do with your cars, have fun. Bye-bye.